How you doing? Once again, it's Ken from Resellers Network, and I'm here today to talk to you about where and how to sell China. We're going to talk about some of the best ways of how to sell it, how to lot it or group it. When you're out yard sale picking or auction hunting, you're going to find everything from lower end stuff like false craft, Corel, and some of those are still worth buying or finding. Uh, but a lot of it's common and just not worth the time. The market's just so saturated with it. So I think you find that there's like a ton of choices as to where and how to sell your China. If you have China, you have to ask yourself, is the China that you're selling, is this just a one-time shot? Uh, is this China that you inherited from, you know, grandma when she passed? Or is this something that you actually want to expand your business and sell more in this category but if you're going to be selling this category more than once or a few times you really need to put some systems in place one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is do i want to play the long game on this or do i want to play the short game on this if you're playing the short game you know what just find a consignment store that'll take it drop off the set drop off grandma's china down at the consignment store, get what you can for it. Or if you wanna try it like on Facebook Marketplace, um, that's quick, it's easy, uh, local pickup only. You might get someone to take a stab at it. Or maybe a dealer will come in and buy it and they're gonna piece it out and resell it. If you're like us, we tend to typically play the long game with China. When I say the long game, what is the long game? Well, we've had some China in inventory for four years, uh, some in for five years. You know, part of it is just laziness. Once it's listed, we just forget about it. And we're fortunate because we have enough space to be able to uh, inventory it and stash it away. Eventually, we're gonna get to, uh, you know, updating the listing. Every once in a while, we take a little time and we, you know, do a price reduction or offer a sale. Um, just to be clear, our long game approach to selling China is uh, typically eBay eBay is our first option for selling China. Uh, it, it doesn't cost us anything to list it because you know we're we're in a store, and we've got the space to store it. So um, we find that China typically sells better, usually around Easter or Christmas and Thanksgiving. What will typically happen is, at least this is my interpretation, families coming in from out of town. Maybe the gathering at the holiday is a little bit bigger than it, it, it usually is. And you've got, you know, grandma's set of China that was uh, something you inherited. And, you, and you've got family coming. So, you know, maybe you're missing some pieces. Maybe you broke some pieces. So I find that we typically tend to sell more replacement China than we sell like sets. Now, if we're doing consignment, for auctions, auctions that we do in-house, uh, local market auctions, selling to dealers, then yes, we'll put a whole entire set into an auction lot and people will bid on it. You can pick up a Noritake dishware set in a local auction for, I don't know, on a good night with nobody there, maybe 20, 30 bucks. Uh, on an average night, you might pay for maybe a 12 piece place setting with some serving pieces. You might pay a hundred bucks. And on a really good night for the auctioneer and not so good for the buyers, uh, you're probably gonna pay you know over $150 for a decent, decent dish set. There's a whole bunch of favorite brands that I like. Um, I like, uh, uh, Lennox used to be really good, but it's not as good as it used to be. Um, but you know, Lennox is always good. It's, it's easy to source and it tends to have resale if you're talking about um like you know higher end stuff even in the glass category you know waterford stuff is great um not in china but like if you sometimes when you're going through a cupboard and you're looking for dish sets to resell and you know you're at an estate sale you might happen to come across uh, a crystal stemware set and look for the waterford mark that's a that's a good resale world dalton is also a good make to try to source when you're out thrifting or going through estate sales. Even some of our best sellers are brands that were bought at like Crate and Barrel 
or Pier 1 Imports. You know, those are patterns that uh, may have been store brands and somebody might have bought enough plates or uh, place settings for, you know, for what their daily use is. And they're nice dishes, they like them, and they break one or they're wanting to expand their set. Maybe they can't find those patterns any longer at those stores. So that's also a great type of pattern to look for when you're trying to source and resell uh, China. Our favorite place to sell China is eBay. We've tried a lot of other platforms and you know they all work but eBay tends to work well for us. We've already got a store, we're already selling in other categories and whereas we have the warehouse space we don't mind once it lists to sit on the shelf for a little while. Offer up and Facebook Marketplace are also some places to sell China. Um, I don't I don't think that we sold as much China on Facebook Marketplace. Um, OfferUp would probably be more like a site that you might list an entire set of China. Uh, same thing with Facebook Marketplace, local pickup type, type websites. When we first started selling a lot of China, we started off listing like these entire sets of like Noritake. Uh, you know, a hundred pieces of Noritake, play setting for nine, 10, 11, 12. And we were getting $300, $400 for it on eBay. But the problem was, was that what would happen would be if you broke one piece in shipping, one piece, you risked getting bad feedback or they wanted to return it. And it, if, if, if a buyer's uh, paying, you know, a hundred dollars to ship, uh, couple boxes of a china set and it has to be returned well now you've got to eat that so we decided that we would start to break the sets down unless we're selling it in a local auction with local pickup uh, which more often than not we are tending to kind of piece out and part out our china sets like with place settings let me explain all right so here we have a set of china right hasn't been cleaned yet just came in probably came in in boxes some of it's chipped we haven't checked it yet if i haven't mentioned don't waste your time trying to list chip china people just don't want it next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean it so it photographs well and you don't want to mail out dirty china if it sells so look up here here we have so this is in china but you know they are serving pieces and there's some plates and dishes and cups and saucers. This is called Harvest Milk Glass, Colony, Indiana. It's getting ready to list. See, we do our research beforehand and find our comps, figure out what stuff is actually sold for. Not what people are asking, but what's actually sold for. And then we go ahead, write a title line, the quality, uh, the quantity that we have and the price that we're gonna list it at. Like here, it looks like we're gonna list four goblets, starting retail price, 37.77. So here's an example of how we broke up our Royal Dalton set. This one is Royal Dalton Tapestry. And we bought this big, big, huge set, maybe place settings for 10 or 12. And then what we did is we broke it up into place settings. So in this case, this would be a one, two, three, four, five, six, a seven piece place setting. It's got the cup and saucer, the bread dish, the salad plate, berry bowl, soup cup, and a dinner plate. So if you bought that Royal Dalton set, let's say at auction, and let's just say you paid a hundred dollars for it, well, then you could break them up in. In this case, I'm not really quite sure what we're selling place settings for, but if it's Dalton, it's probably somewhere ballpark around 50 bucks. Um, that's just a guess. But you can see whereas buying a China set for $100 and then breaking it up into place settings, gosh, if we were able to get $50 per place setting and we were able to sell 12 of them, that would be $600. So you've spent $100 and you've made 500. But the factor here is, can you sell it? And how long is it gonna take to sell? That's the question. If you specialize in it after a while, you kind of get a feel for what's gonna have 
a quick sale, you know, figure out what your sell through is and figure out how much money you want to spend on China. Like with us, our sell through over like a 12 month period might be 50 50 at best, maybe. So even if we said that we're selling one out of four pieces we list over a one year period, you know, our return on our investment is, like I said, it's sort of the slow go, it's, it's the slow game. But one of the things that I do like about China is residual sales, meaning I've got China that I've spent the time and energy to list it, and I've put it away and forgotten about it in inventory. And then a year later, sometimes even two years later, we get the order to ship it. Excellent. I've already made my money back on the set. I've forgotten all about it and money in the bank. Like I've said over and over and over again, it really is whether you're in it for the long haul or whether you need to, if you, if, listen, if you're reselling in an apartment and you've only got a hundred listings up because that's all you have space for, well, you know what? Your, your take on this is gonna be a whole lot different than playing the long game because you need to flip stuff, flip it, flip it, flip it. And if you're trying to flip, I don't know if China is really the category for you. You might want to look at some other things that maybe have less profit, but have a little quicker turnaround. So just to bring you up to speed, we are a full service auction business here in central Massachusetts. We also have a real estate brokerage. So we tie the two businesses together, basically working primarily with estates and estate attorneys. Typically a family will call us and will assist them with the liquidation of all the personal property. And that's oftentimes where we're able to get access to China, uh, whether we buy it directly and buy out the estate for cash, or whether they sign a consignment contract with us, either to sell through our online bidding platform called ubid2buy.com, or we might consign it and sell it for them on eBay. But I thought I'd just take a minute to take a quick walk with you through one of our inventory rooms. This is one of three that we have for eBay. We've got two different stores and three different eBay areas where all of our uh, eBay items are warehoused. This one that tends to be a lot of China. And as you can see, like here's a single serving piece. Here's two serving pieces put together, a vegetable with a gravy dish. Here we're selling sets for some reason this is an old listing probably selling like the whole set which is pretty rare that we do that china a lot of china glass little figurines look at these are the biswick we usually sell those individually some of them sell souvenir plates look here's a shirley temple a little creamer shirley temple all stuff that you can source if you're out hunting, looking. Here's a set of Flint Ridge. We're selling these in groups of four. So one listing is four saucers with no cups. I don't know why we're selling that. Usually if they don't have cups, we usually toss the saucers. We've got some bread plates. Four bread plates as a listing. And then it looks like we have two quality two of these either luncheon or salad plates. And then we have uh, one, two, three, four dinner plates. So there's a whole bunch of lots here. There's one lot, two, three, four, five lots here. You can see whereas if you bought this pile of dishes at a yard sale for $10, well, the plates are probably listed for four plates for like 30 bucks and then there's another 25 and 25, and then maybe another 25, and then maybe 10 bucks for that. So, you know, what do you have? You have, probably have a $10 purchase, $100 worth of listing. Look at this big egg plate, kind of cool. Somebody might buy that. It's been here for a little bit. It's listed at $24.99. Well, if it hasn't sold, maybe we should just reduce the price. Stemware, glasses, Fenton Georgian pink cocktail glasses. 
set of four, $33. Here's some dishes here. Here's Lennox Hemsley. So we're selling five piece place settings. So we have a whole bunch of five piece place settings there. Maybe we might've spent 30 or $40 to buy that set. And now we've got it split up full retail if we sold everything for maybe a few hundred bucks. Hummels. Hummels don't bring what they used to. This is a set of three. We're selling three of them. They'll probably sit here until the building falls down. You can see all the other china, glass. Okay, here's your bonus round for you. If you're at yard sales and you see yearbooks, yearbooks, we sell a ton of them. These are all yearbooks, high school yearbooks. We typically get 25 bucks for a yearbook. And if it's a college, it's like 35. And if it's like, this is look, MIT, 1971, that's more money. How much is that listed for? Yeah, that's 35 bucks. So the bad news is that if you think China is a long hold, gosh, yearbooks, some of them will sit here for years. No pun intended. <laughs> No, but seriously, if you're going through a yard sale and you happen to see a bunch of yearbooks, if you can get them for 50 cents or a buck, you know what? Buy them. Because at some point in time, someone is going to want to look up to see if they can find all their old classmates or see they don't have their yearbook anymore from high school or college, and you'll make a sale. Here's more china. Lots of it. All different patterns. Some more Dalton, Royal, Royal Dalton, which is this one. This is Empress. Wheatfield by Forrest. So let's talk about Hallmark. You know, if a China pattern doesn't have a Hallmark on it, I'm probably not gonna buy it. And the reason is, is because it's just such a crapshoot. You know, there's a ton of China out there that is worth selling and doing the research on, but I just don't have time. I want to be able to look at a pattern. I want to be able to tell immediately what the manufacturer's name is and what the pattern is. There just isn't enough time in the day to research these things. Of course, with artificial intelligence now and things like Google Lens and other ways to search, it does make it easier. Now you can Google a pattern, it'll usually come up a little bit quicker. You know, in the old days, I say the old days, what, five years ago? You know, what we'd have to do is just take a, take a piece of China and then go to like replacements, LTD, replacements.com, um, and have to go through, if we knew the manufacturer, at least that was a good place to start. And then we would have to go through endless pages of trying to match the the pattern of the china we had with the with the one that they had and it was just a tedious daunting task but now if you take your i'm a google phone guy so i just have uh, at the bottom a place where i can just click a button and i can point it at a pattern and you know 50 percent of the time it'll actually pop up with with the correct brand and at least it gives me a place to start for my listing Sometimes the pattern's hard to read, takes a little bit more research. Flash glass. Carnival glass. Doesn't sell as well as it used to. So here's a set of coal port. It's been in our inventory like forever, but I don't care. It's just so damn pretty. Somebody at some point is going to find a need for this and going to want to replace some missing pieces. Oh, that one's got a chip. I hope it's disclosed. And look at this thing. Look at this thing. It's a, it's a vase. It's made out of fish skin. Goodness gracious, the stuff we come up with. Huh, who do you think will buy this? <laughs> arc, arc, arc. So, as you can see, pretty much China everywhere. Up, down, left, right, in, out. China is 
everywhere. So let's touch base on a few other places to sell China. So you can sell it on OfferUp. Um, that's a app program that sells a lot of local stuff. Um, good to sell big sets. I don't know if I would list all my replacement China on OfferUp. Um, and just to clarify, when I refer to the word replacement, I'm referring to China that somebody would buy to add to their existing set. Somebody wouldn't necessarily buy one place setting, unless they're a single person and they happen to like it, but usually that's not the case. Some other places to sell China would be Etsy. I don't have a whole lot of experience with this. I actually employ someone that sells a lot of stuff on Etsy and uh, mostly custom apparel, but I've never really had any luck with selling uh, China on Etsy. Not that some people don't do it, I just haven't. There's one other website we haven't really talked about much regarding selling. China on is replacements.com. So the good sides of working with them are that they're always looking for China, especially certain patterns, and you have to become uh, one of their dealers uh, that could cost money in order for you to sell to them and get access to their catalogs and their database of prices and what they're looking for. So in order to sell to replacements, you have to go and look at their master list of what they're looking for and buying at the moment. Then you have to pack the China, send it off to them uh, down in the Carolinas, I believe they are, and they'll 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 unbox it. And as long as it's uh, in pristine condition, they'll send you a check for it. I had actually considered maybe perhaps putting together a small business or sideline, actually working off their list, and then when we had. Uh, a truck full of it to actually drive it down there and save the shipping costs. But that never really facilitated. But for somebody that may be local to them down south, that might make a lot of sense. But again, they're very selective as to what do they what they buy. Oftentimes we would send them a box and we'd get a notification from them saying that the condition and the quality of what we sent them wasn't considered pristine. And pristine meaning that they might have fork marks or scratches in the glaze. And those are all things that they're looking for um, when they buy China from you. One of the real quick, easy ways to sell China is bringing it to a consignment store, open up a relationship with um, one of the owners at a consignment store to bring them China on a regular basis. But honestly, they're not typically looking for individual pieces. They're looking more of like for sets, big sets. I find that when I'm working with consignment stores that they typically tend to take high commissions and that's okay. I can appreciate that. There's a lot of work and a lot of cost and overhead in having a consignment store, but that doesn't often leave a lot of money left over uh, to give them the set and then get a check for it. Uh, I would much rather try to retail it myself. Another place to sell your China is on Macari. I don't typically have good luck selling on Macari uh, with China, especially replacement China. Uh, maybe an individual vase or something like I just sold a Vilroy and Bach uh, tall floor vase. Uh, what was cool about it was I was able to put the keywords in and um, I find that the, the buyer type is a little different. You know that it is on eBay, uh, tend to sell a lot of like home goods and decorative type of stuff on Macari. One other thing I wanted to talk about real quickly is cross posting. So we were cross posting for a little while um, during COVID when we had nothing else to do and we were sitting around the warehouse with, you know, with a cup of coffee and uh, the phone wasn't ringing. We sold a lot of stuff uh, cross posting. We had subscribed to a service uh, called List Perfectly and we were paying them a fee to use their software, their interface. And what that did was it allowed us to be able to list on eBay and then we could click a button and we could transfer that information over to Facebook Marketplace as well as at the time we were using uh, Macari uh, for like a whole bunch of different type of categories and items that we were selling. And the good points and bad points of cross-posting are that, well, naturally you're going to get more eyes on it. Um, I don't think China is the best avenue for cross-posting, 
But that's just my opinion. You know what? If you disagree with that, write in the comments below and explain to me why I'm wrong, because I would like to know. Um, tell me in the comments below what your luck has been selling China, replacement type China, and where the best places have been to sell it. Let me know below. The primary reason why we stopped using List Perfect was because there are times of year when we're busier than others, and when we're not busy, we can focus more on listing and selling online, but when we are busy, it's just a mad dash just to get all the work and clients um, taken care of. And when we were cross-posting, what was happening was we were selling out of inventory, and we hadn't quite worked around a formula that was efficient and effective uh, for taking down listings on other platforms that we cross-posted to. And what would happen would be is we would sell a popular item uh, on, say, Mercari, and then the item would still be up on Facebook Marketplace as well as eBay. Somebody on Marketplace would buy it, we'd be out of product. Well, not so bad on some platforms, really bad on others. So, you know, eBay is only going to give you um, out of stock so many times before they really drop your standing as far as a seller. So we thought it maybe be best just to stop cross-posting at that point. And, you know, just one more thing on cross-posting. It's not a do-all, save-all type thing. There's still extra work involved when you're cross-posting, even though the software will do a lot of the transfer uh, of work over to the other platforms. It's not doing all your work. So it, it does add time to your listing time. So just a few final things to remember. If you're going to deal in China, you're going to sell China, make sure you clean it. Make sure you clean it before you sell it. Take some great photos. Don't waste your time on chipped pieces or cracked pieces. Don't waste your time on pieces that are permanently stained or have a lot of crazing. You also don't want to waste your time with single pieces, unless they're serving pieces or they're exceptionally valuable China pieces. Don't waste your time selling single plates or single cups or single saucers without cups even worse. Familiarize yourself with the higher end and more desirable brand names. There's a ton of China out there to be sourced. So I hope I covered everything this week in regards to selling China. My name is Ken and I am the auctioneer of record and owner of the Park Hill Auction Gallery, ubittobuy.com. I run this business with my crew. You're always welcome to stop down during business hours and visit. Feel free to leave any comments or ask any questions in the comment section below. If you like the content of what we're providing, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you again soon.